Good morning. Thank you for joining us to the opening of Opiates Don't Discriminate exhibit. My name is Amber Fast. I am Community Development Coordinator for the City of Lloydminster. And I'd just like to start to say that the City of Lloydminster respectively acknowledges that we are located on Treaty 6 territory, a traditional lands of First Nations people and Métis people. I would like to just say that we are so excited to bring this to Lloydminster. It has been a long time coming. We had it ready to launch prior to COVID and I think it is much needed for a community. In saying that, I would like to welcome the Honorable Mayor Gerald Elbers to the stage. Thank you very much, Amber, for that introduction. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Whether through direct use or, the, or that of a loved one or friend, we all likely know someone that has been affected by substance abuse disorder in one form or another. It is for this reason that we're gathered here today. We come together to raise awareness and educate each other and the community on the mental health condition and to help support and provide supports to end this stigma that exists. Throughout this morning's gathering, you'll learn about a local perspective on the opioid crisis and mental health and addiction and the importance to our community. And later this afternoon, the Opioids Don't Discriminate exhibit an, interna an interactive experience designed to educate and help spread awareness on opioid addiction will open to the public. Before I go too much further, I want to share my experience with the exhibit as I had the opportunity to view similar materials and learn about the like experiences in Strathcona County. I'd like to thank the FCSS team and all the supporters that helped build this in Strathcona County. I had the opportunity to attend two years ago when they introduced this display and it was very very powerful how it spoke to myself regarding the opioids. It changed my opinion about those that have been affected by opioids. It really spoke to my heart and said I needed to take a second look at people and not everyone is the same. There's challenges without giving away the display, the need to realize that it can happen to your neighbor, a family member, your best friend, coworker. It can happen so easily. And I just can't say enough about that. So I would encourage everyone to make time in the next few days to try and come down and take in the display, see firsthand the examples that are presented and then relate to yourself and how it can relate to your to you and like i say your loved ones your neighbors your friends your co-workers it they do not discriminate it's a perfect description and that's what we need to address i want to thank family and community support social services service group team in strathcona county for developing the exhibit and i also want to thank our fcss Minister team for its adoption of opioids don't discriminate for our community to appreciate. In addition to this free public exhibit, FCSS has welcomed additional honored guests through our two virtual sessions that they're going to present. Our keynote speaker, Petra Schultz, the founder of Mums Stop the Harm in Edmonton, and an advocate for drug policy reform aimed at reducing the harm associated with substance use will present the lessons she has learned over the years following the passing of her son after an accidental fent fentanyl overdose. And on Sunday's closing ceremony including inspiring local testimonials and the rehabilitation perspectives from staff of the Equiscate Healing Lodge in Onion Lake. Before I hand things back to Amber, I want to say thank you again for joining us today. 
and thank the upcoming speakers for taking time to share their learnings and experience with our community today. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to welcome up to the stage uh, Tyler Lorenz. He is manager of residence and recovery here in Lloydminster and an inter instrumental part of recovery here in our community. Uh, I will not talk too long, but please, please join us. Thanks, Amber. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Albers, as well. And I want to thank uh, the local FCSS team for, you know, putting this all together. Uh, it has been a long process to finally uh, bring this to fruition here in Lloydminster. Uh, as Amber mentioned, we were looking at uh, bringing it prior to COVID. We were just about ready to go, but uh, it was delayed a year and a half, uh, but that's okay. Uh, I want to also point out that because of that delay and because of COVID, it's even more important that we do take the time to really look at this exhibit. Uh, a lot has changed in the past year and a half as a result of COVID and uh, opioids uh, in our community has never been uh, more of an issue. There's been much publicity over the past few years with regards to the opioid epidemic throughout North America and the world for that matter. The consequences of opioid addiction have touched every community, big and small, urban and rural. Lloydminster has not been immune. While the pandemic has taken most of the headlines the past year and a half, opioid addiction and overdoses in our community have been slowly taking hold. RCMP overdose calls last year, uh, calls over last year's record high are already up 40% in 2021, and there's still two months left. An even more staggering statistic is that Lo Lloydminster opioid-related trafficking occurrences attended by the RCMP are triple those of 2020. Where there is demand, there is product. The, this, is the epidemic on, this is an epidemic on its own and there are no signs of slowing down, just like COVID. I would expect that we will continue to see an increase for some time while the mental health consequences of the pandemic work th themselves through. I'm not going to get all caught up in statistics though. Those can be made available to anybody that wants them. I want to focus my attention on why an exhibit like this should matter to you here in Lloydminster. Opioids truly do not discriminate and it, that is just as true here in Lloydminster as it is in other centres. Opioid addiction and overdoses affect men, women, young and old. They affect the ho homeless and the housewife. They are very, there is a very high likelihood that you know somebody that is, has an opioid addiction, or at least has one in the past. Let me take a moment to tell you about some of the faces of opioid addiction in our community. I want to talk about the guy who worked in the oil patch, providing for his family, like so many others in our community do. Eventually, the drugs took over and he found himself in jail, facing a much different path than he ever imagined. I want to talk to you about the single mother of one beautiful girl whose smile would light up any room. I want to talk to you about the mother of three whose passing left her children in the care of their grandmother. I want to talk to you about everybody's friend, the happy musical guy that passed away on a hillside during a trip to Edmonton. I want to talk about a First Nations gentleman that suffered unimaginable trauma at the hands of residential school system. I want to talk to you about the teenager. That tried drugs for the first time now realizing his supply was spiked with an opioid. These are just a handful of the hundreds of cases in our community where opioids forever altered the path of everyone close to them. The faces of, faces of opioid addiction posed in this exhibit demonstrate the diversity of those affected by opioids and the seemingly innocent path to addiction. I want to focus some attention though on one major segment of this pandemic, and that is those, that, those adversely affected by tainted drug supply. More and more often, those dying from opioid overdose do not even use opioids. They are unknowing victims of spiked uppers, often fentanyl, within min minutes or in cardiac arrest. This can happen to anyone. 
A recent warning by the Lloydminster RCMP resulted in four overdose deaths in a period of a couple days, suggested that it was a tainted drug supply that was contributing to the rash of calls and unimaginable multiple deaths. I was at the scene of two of those deaths that morning. What I witnessed is far is how far of a reach the pain of over, overdose and overdose death has from loved ones, family, friends, to service providers and co-workers. Opioid addiction affects far more than just one, the one struggling and will affect many more for generations to come. For us to fight this ad epidemic and prevent Lloydminster from becoming a stronghold for opioid addiction, we must all work together. We must educate ourselves rather than judge. We all like to think that it will never happen to me or any of my loved ones until it does. It truly can happen to anyone. I hope you take the time and find out how you can be part of the solution. Judgment and stigma force those struggling into the shadows and deeper into their addiction. Those using prescriptions soon find themselves secretly sourcing options from the street. Support and compassion will reduce the number of, the number of people struggling in our community and communicate that we care about everyone. Please take an hour this week to show your community that you care. I bet you may just learn something from this exhibit. I want to thank Mayor Albers, Amber and Laura Lee. It's been a pleasure being a part of this uh, organizing committee and look forward to a successful week. I hope to see you all here. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. It was very powerful. I would like to welcome up to the stage Laura Lee Marin, Alberta, Sur Sur Alberta Health Services, Mental Health and Addictions, to speak about community and addiction. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today as we open the Opioids Don't Discriminate exhibit. I'm grateful to be here I'm in the heart of Treaty 6 and to work together as we uh, form a, a relationship of reconciliation, respect, understanding, and healing. So thank you to the Lloydminster FCSS team, to Amber Fast for your leadership to bring this exhibit to Lloydminster and for pulling together the team that would make this happen. My name is Laura Lee Marin, and I'm going to adjust my stuff here. <laughs> I'm a health promotion facilitator with addiction prevention and mental health promotion with Alberta Health Services. And I serve the communities of Lloydminster, Vermilion, and the County of Vermilion River. And I'm so fortunate to do this work as it reflects my passion to make a positive impact and build resilience in our community. It is the strength and resilience of this community Lloydminster and the people who call Lloydminster home that motivate and guide my work, work that is done in collaboration with agencies and organizations that share the vision to create a community where kids can grow up great, every kid, every day. This is the vision adopted by YLL My Home, the Action Committee for Lloydminster Area Drug Strategy. And so you're probably wondering, how does that vision relate to Opioids Don't Discriminate exhibit? I want to take you on a short journey and then I'll answer that question. It was September 29th, 2015 and my husband and I were on vacation and we were literally on the top of a mountain and my cell phone rang and it surprised us that we had cell service. It was my husband's sister and she wanted to share with us that their son, Brad, was in the hospital and he was addicted to cocaine. They didn't know how this happened and they were angry. They were sad and they were scared and they were worried about what people would think of their family. This addiction doesn't happen in my family. They needed help navigating the difficult journey of detox, of treatment and recovery and so we went to Regina. I sat with Brad and we had a long conversation. He shared with me his journey. 
You see, Brad never intended to get up one day and be addicted to cocaine. But in grade nine, Brad had anxiety, but he never told anyone. He just learned that if he had a drink of alcohol in the morning before he went, caught the school bus, that he could cope, he could get through his day. In grade 10, he would sometimes have a drink at lunch to help him get through his day. Brad was fun, popular, athletic. He was part of his school community, a celebrated athlete. Brad was loved. The need to self-medicate continued through high school and into his adult life. Brad was always the life of the party, but no one knew the impact that the mental health problem and his substance use was having on his well-being. He was the best karaoke singer ever. We still just smile when we think of him at our family functions singing karaoke, not realizing the hurt that was in him. We were losing him to a substance use disorder and to an undiagnosed mental illness, and we didn't even know it. I didn't know it. He was super good at hiding how he was really doing, and he was high functioning until he wasn't. He wanted to help. He needed a system that would provide him with detox, with treatment, recovery support, with empathy. He got bits and pieces of that, but it was never enough and for never long enough. On June 18th, 2016, we received an early morning phone call that Brad was in the hospital from an accidental fentanyl poisoning. And on June 28th, he took his last breath. Brad was 27. This should not have been his story. I should not have been able, I should have been able to help him change his story. No longer do we think addiction doesn't happen in our family. You see, opioids don't discriminate. I was already working in addiction prevention and mental health promotion and YLL, my home, already had their vision to create a community where kids could grow up great. With Brad's passing, this work got real for me, really real. So what can we do to change the story of other families to prevent addiction and promote mental well-being, <clears throat> to build empathy and compassion, to advocate for a better system for people living with a substance use disorder and or a mental illness? We must do it together. Other speakers today and through this week will share the opportunities we have as individuals and as a collective community to create change. Be part of that change by taking the time to come through the exhibit. Last night, we brought the members of the Lloydminster Youth Council through the exhibit. It was powerful and it made an impact on those young people. They were talking about it hours later and I bet they're talking about it today, sharing that experience with their family and their friends. We need to support these young people as they look for ways to express empathy and compassion, to pay attention to their friends and family members, and to have the courage to say, I need help. Dr. Gabor Mate has this quote and I love it so much. He says, the opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is connection. So how does that vision of YLL My Home to create a community where kids can grow up great, make a difference and prevent addiction. At every opportunity, we promote connection. The opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is connection. We promote connection and ways to build resilience. We invest in building the developmental assets of children and youth, in helping adults to support developmental relationships. We help parents and trusted adults talk about kids with the hard stuff, to have those awkward conversations about alcohol, tobacco, vaping, cannabis, mental health, opioids, and other drugs, and to talk about addiction. It is a long game. I often refer to it as my 100-year strategy. It's a long game, and we need everyone to come and play. The Lloyd Needs Report told us that we need to build a sense of belonging and connection in our community. There are simple things we can do that will help. Know your neighbors. Know the kids in your neighborhood. The kids who pack your groceries or fill your gas tank. Learn their names and share with them the assets you see in them. And always practice kindness. I love to say to a young person packing my groceries, wow, thanks for doing such a great job or thanks for taking extra special care of that carton of eggs. Always look for those little simple things 
that you can do that will build those assets and that connection to young people in our community. Children and youth are valuable assets in our community, so let's nurture them. While you're busy doing those small daily things to build connection and a sense of belonging, please remember to take care of yourself, to make self-care a priority. Then model that self-care for our young people so we can help them grow up great, healthy, and resilient. Model for them how to ask for help and share with them what help is available. We know that navigating services and supports can be challenging, particularly in our border city. So sit with them and go to our community website, lloydminstermentalhealth.ca, to learn about services and supports that are available in our community and online. There is so much to learn on the website. Learn more about mental health and addiction. Learn strategies to, um, for coping strategies. Learn how to support someone living in addiction, experiencing a mental health problem or a mental illness. And learn how to recognize and prevent suicide. All of that is on the Lloydminster Mental Health uh, .ca website. And the Lloydminster Mental Health Navigation Tool, it was developed by a team with Project Sunrise funding support from Lloydminster Region Health Foundation and is the envy of many communities across our provinces. The tools updated regularly to support navigation and learning and printed booklets are available here at the exhibit. It is the daily connection, care and empathy that will change the story for other families. It is the time we invest learning and understanding the opioid crisis, learning the stories of sons and daughters, moms and dads, friends and co-workers that will reduce stigma and increase empathy for those living with a substance use disorder. It is their stories that will help us advocate for change, to improve access to service and supports, to create a better pathway for people living with a substance use disorder or living in recovery. How do we as a community help them to be successful living in recovery? That we can create a community and a system that provides person-centered care. We are experiencing an opioid crisis and on average four people died in Alberta each day this year as a result of an overdose. Most of those are opioid related and are accidental. So we invite you to come down to the Civic Center Auditorium to start this journey uh, in and how to build empathy and how to understand the opioid crisis that we're in and how um, to have compassion for people who are have been on this journey. Take in the Opioids Don't Discriminate exhibit and, uh, and learn about that opiate crisis and the journey of people living with addiction. And we invite you to be part of creating a community where kids can grow up great, every kid, every day. And together we will make the difference. Thank you. Thank you, Laura Lee. That was a wonderful message. And I want to invite you all to come out uh, to the exhibit. Our opening hours for the public is 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesday to Friday. And then on Saturday, we're open 10 to 6. On Sunday, we are open 12 to 6. Friday is our registered speaker, Petra Schultz. And then we have our closing ceremonies with some wonderful, impactful speakers. Uh, please visit our website, www.lloydminster.ca slash opiates to register and join in. Uh, with that being said, sorry, very impactful today, uh, very, uh, very emotional. And as it should be, we, uh, we are all very passionate about this. And I hope that you join us and learn and share your stories. Thank you all for joining us today.